guys want to start off by introducing yourselves and what your role was in the film? Sure. Um, I'm Olivia Lloyd, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, director, producer, editor, um, yeah. puppeteer. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jillian Mayer. I'm an executive producer, director, writer, uh, and Jillian Mayer, 69. Yeah. Uh, Brett Potter, director, producer, executive producer as well. Woo! Dylan Redford, director, writer, and actor, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Xander Robin, director, editor, media manager. Yeah. Moral support, <laughs> friend. <laughs> Hannah Fidel, writer, director. Uh, we can say I made the PDF and wrote and directed. Yeah. <laughs> Julian Uri Rodriguez, uh, director and actor. Yeah. Uh, Phil M. Haas, I'm the director. Phil Lord, uh, writer, producer. the audience, but if you're so compelled to ask a question, raise your hand up high so we can see you. Um, what were the initial rules and boundaries that you set off, or was there a complete artistic freedom for each one of these? Um, at, at first, we, we did them in two rounds. Um, the first round, the boat just had to be in it, and they, no one, they didn't even follow that. Honestly. <laughs> And then the second round, we kind of, a bunch of other filmmakers got together and had to stitch and figure out how to get from one to the other in some way. It doesn't have to be literal, but somehow. But th there were some rules. We all got together when this thing started and um, hung out on a speedboat and talked about boats. <laughs> Thought about boats. And uh, yeah, and then maybe the stories you'd like to tell on boats. And then, there was a place where it came from. There was some communication about what was going on. <laughs> like we have, we have some nice executive producers, uh, Bo and Arrow, and we found out one of them actually hates boats. Uh, in the first weekend, where we all got together to go on a boat, uh, that was kind of cool <laughs> to realize that he wanted to do a boat movie, although he hates them. <laughs> Um, we've all heard the pitch, and some of us own the PDF now. Um, but why, why did the filmmakers agree to do this? What was the what was the big seller for you guys as um, directors and writers to agree to be part of this project? So we could party on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, part of the deal was if you came on board the project, you owned a part of the boat. So it was like, do you want to own a part of the boat? Do you want to ride you know, very fast in the boat? And do you want to make a movie on the boat? And for most of the, I mean, for all the filmmakers up here, that's an, it's an easy pitch. I was really excited about the challenge of taking the sort of anthology form and figuring out a way that we could use the sort of collective infrastructure that Porsche already had in place to try to weave something that wasn't just purely a narrative feature, but wasn't also just a short block or what is known in my mind just as an anthology feature. And so when Lucas would talk to me about the project and he said, yeah, I'm trying to do something in between where they're woven together, some characters, you know, overlap, um, that sounded like an insane challenge. It's like, what are the two really difficult things in independent film? Making an anthology movie that's good and shooting on a boat. I was like, both of those things sound exciting and I want to be a part of it. Um, I think the concept speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I've known Jillian and Lucas for since 2012, and just seeing their work um, and the cool shit that they do, I, I am always desperate to be a part of it. <laughs> Does anyone have a question? I 
Honestly, we just had, there's been a hundred versions of this movie. <laughs> Honest to God, we've tried every which way to stitch these things together. Like, there's like Doctor Strange, infinite universes of this film, and this is just the version you guys are seeing. So, that, the short answer to your question is like, with a lot of care, like we really just uh, sat in a dark room for like a year and a half and kind of figured it out the best way to shift between those tones. So, but thank you. There's also a nine hour version if you want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a serial. Had the other filmmakers seen each other's films, or this is the first time that maybe some of you have seen the whole thing together? I think together this is the first time we've all been able to get back in each other's presence. I mean, I've been sending those links for a while, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope they see them. <laughs> no, no one's watching the links. <laughs> Any other questions? Right. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about um, the significance, uh, especially if you guys that grew up and and have the brand of Miami so present in a lot of your films, um, the concept behind the bigger picture of the of the film and what Miami means to you guys? I guess it's sort of a distillation of a lot of the work we've been doing for the last decade with like our little shorts in Miami where it's, you know, there's all these narratives that are really exciting and, and different and that we experience. Like, I, I always say it's like living in Macondo, like the headlines are, are more interesting and strange than any fiction and really delving into that. And this is sort of like, you know, it's a very famous city, but it's a city that's famous for the pop culture imagery that's put upon it by outsiders, like the Scarface and Miami Vice. Not that that stuff isn't real. It's definitely very real, um, but there's other things too. And so this was sort of our way of, uh, you know, trying to marry some of like the more uh, grassroots, like underground stories that we're telling with something that maybe could reach more people in a feature form. Um, and then also like there's some like meta things that are like exciting to us, like the at least for me like the last image of like the neons getting pulled down, which is like you know. The, the speedboat neon old image of Miami pop culture getting pulled down by this like fucking weird dolphin thing, voice for Robert Redford. I, I hope, which I thank you. <laughs> He's gone. Um, he yeah, um, but that's yeah. That's, to pick up on that, um, that pretty much we live in a place that's full of magical surrealism in all angles and. I'm sure you've heard of Florida Man and all that, and it's all true, and it's just part of our lives, and it's 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 part of it, and you know we have um, like different timelines that we all live with. You know, the world has said that in 50 years we're going to be underwater, so there's this kind of fatality that occurs in a lot of the work that may, you've seen in here, but also some of the work that's been coming out of our collaborative over the last 10 years, and it's like you know what does it mean to be in a creative when? the world is sinking or ending and, and you know you have so much instability like environmentally or infrastructurally or whatever and so I think a lot of those themes tend to just kind of make their way into the work whether you intend or not and uh, take form in the way of a man dolphin. So. And these are things that everyone I think is in the back of their heads but we're like every time it rains really badly like the streets are actually flooded in the way that it wasn't when we were younger in Miami so we're actually like living this thing so it's hard to avoid that stuff. Yeah and when I, I, I haven't been living in Miami that long about three years and like through talking to Lucas and Jillian and getting to know everyone that had lived in Miami and my brief experience there it felt like the form of the film being a mosaic and being something that sort of had a semblance of a narrative, but was also um, very sort of fractured and had all these different parts that were assembled into a whole. Felt very honest to what it feels like to live in Miami, which is such an incredibly diverse and complicated, um, you know, has such a diverse and complicated history and geography. And so it, it, it felt honest that like the form of this movie would match what it really feels like to live in Miami, which is, and I also think to what Lucas is saying too trying to avoid what has plagued Miami, which are these singular dominant narratives that have to find what Miami is to everyone else in the country. Um, and we want to be like, well, Miami is all these, all these different things at once um, on a seat boat. Um, and so it just felt honest. Were there 15 identical boats, or did you guys just borrow the boat every time you decided to have a seat? Did we all get a boat? We all, under your seats, there will be 
Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There, um, in the story of the film... How many boats are there? Okay, I'm going to break it down right now. In the story of the film, there are four boats. There's Lane Pipe, the original. It dies, it blows up. It has a child with the monster truck, Lane Pipe 2. But then, there's a virtual boat. Only exists in virtual reality. That's virtual Lane Pipe. Then there's also Lane Pain, which is yet another one. The Lane, yeah, Lane Pain is the, the bad VR boat. Yes. 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 <laughs> so those are the four, four boats, and there's only there's one real boat, which we got, uh, which was purchased specifically for the movie. But, yeah. It's for sale. It's for which, in case uh, if you came in late, the boat is for sale. It should be right outside. <laughs> <laughs> what about the baby boat? Oh, the, well, one of the baby boats we blew up for one of the VFX shots, there were two baby boats. The other baby boat is in a fish tank in our office. <laughs> Just slowly rotting away everything else. Uh, Brett, you want to talk about it? We, we hired a speedboat consultant, and we, just, we flew to Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. We like completed like a journey. Hey, hey, whoa. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's pretty crazy out there. Okay, speedboat <laughs> capital of the United States. Okay, it's just, it's like a huge lake, and there's no speed limit on this lake. So it's the speedboat mecca of the United States, and we went there. Our speedboat consultant found it, and we kind of just fell in love with it. Yeah, well, we wanted like this very specific, like the cigarette power boats. Uh, those are made in Miami. However, the ones from like that have that silhouette and like that uh, paint job that were of that level of like ridiculousness. Like all of those have sort of aged out of commission because they've corroded in salt water. So in order to get a boat from that era, even though it was made in Miami, we had to go to Lake of the Ozarks, buy it from a freshwater source, and then tow it back to Miami. We brought it home. We brought, yeah. we brought the boat home. She was born in Miami. So she's born in Miami. Yes. Moved to like some other place for a while. And yeah. who knows where her next home is. Yeah, <laughs> and she wound up back home. That's beautiful. And now she can be yours. <laughs> well, please help me thank the entire filming crew of On the Boat.